everything you say can be used against you. Thanks, Dima. Yeah, that's for the opening line. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. Um, really glad to see everyone here again. Uh, so today's meeting uh, is in a way a continuation from uh, the last meeting when we started discussing different uh, data uh, visualization capabilities of the platform and yeah since uh, we have so many of them uh, we uh, mostly touch base on uh, properties that were common for all viewers and the overall uh, idea about how they interact how they share common uh, selections and filters how to uh, produce and share layouts uh, and so on and so forth so if you are interested in that i would uh, recommend you to go to our uh, youtube channel and checking out our uh, last video i think we covered that uh, in uh, details and of course yeah feel free to uh, shoot us uh, an email or uh, go to our community and ask any questions there. So today we will be continuing uh, the previous discussion and we will mostly focus on uh, individual viewers. We will not go into very uh, deep details, but we will we'll just uh, cover the basics of them. Uh, then we will uh, discuss the way our platform integrates with uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, both in terms of uh, visualization and uh, creating and debugging uh, scripts in Jupyter Notebooks, which can later become functions in our platform. And uh, also related to that, we will give a, a little uh, teaser regarding our uh, predictive modeling, if we have uh, time enough for that. Uh, in the end, uh, hopefully we'll have time, we'll uh, discuss how to use uh, all of these uh, features that we will be discussing from uh, the uh, JavaScript API for the automation purposes and for the application building purposes. Okay, um, if there are any uh, questions at this point, yeah, I'd like to take them or any comments uh, if uh, anyone wants to cover any particular uh, section in more details, yeah, please uh, yeah, tell us now or interrupt us at uh, any time. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, here's our platform, that's our uh, public version, and we'll uh, start by uh, opening uh, different uh, data sets and uh, visualizing them in the platform. So let's uh, get my favorite uh, demographics data set. Uh, and the, the way uh, I intend to spend probably 30, 40 minutes is uh, just going by, by one, one by one for each of the viewers and we'll uh, see uh, how useful it is and uh, how to use it. So let's start with uh, scatterplot. Uh, everyone is familiar with this concept, so we will not be uh, spending uh, too much time on that. Uh, I'll probably just mention it's uh, highly interactive uh, capabilities uh, and uh, uh, very decent performance. Uh, it can uh, render millions of points uh, interactively. Uh, they could be uh, either uh, color coded or uh, uh, size coded and of course uh, in uh, any combination uh, it also supports wait, 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 uh, what, what happens if you, you plot the categorical value uh, along one of the axes yeah that's what we just did oh a categorical value uh, that's a really great question Dima uh, because well uh, it will show it uh, as you would expect, uh, but we have special support for uh, different uh, domains. So uh, let's see what happens when we open uh, uh, molecular structures and we, when we will try to visualize it on a scatter plot. 
So, so that would be smiles. So not only we render categorical structures, but we actually render chemical structures. And whenever the platform is uh, extended uh, by plugins, it's possible to define your own renderers for uh, uh, cells, for data renderers, which will be automatically picked up uh, by, by the scatter pod and by other viewers as well. So everything that I will show you, just keep in mind that, uh, yeah, the axis will automatically pick up the proper rendering for the data type. How are they sorted? Uh, how long the, how long the why? Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, they are sorted uh, alphanumerically. Uh, so it goes from A to U uh, in this case. Uh, individual data types uh, can also define their own uh, individual uh, uh, sort functions. But that's an advanced topic, uh, not for today, but yeah, keep in mind mm. it's possible to sort molecules, uh, for instance, according to their molecular weight. Okay. Uh, yeah, as we mentioned uh, in the previous meetings, most uh, common actions are exposed either on the surface of the view viewer. For instance, yeah, we can change uh, all the axis or we can uh, do some operations with uh, categories. Uh, uh, the next common place would be uh, right clicking on it uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, checking out the pop-up menu. Uh, yeah, many. Uh, things could be uh, adjusted right from there. Uh, some viewers have uh, some uh, extra capabilities, so uh, I would recommend checking uh, that uh, place. So for instance, uh, this particular one has a feature where uh, when you turn it on, it would show the uh, drop line uh, for the current point. You see it's uh, uh, projecting the current value to X or Y. Uh, such uh, mini features could uh, also be added uh, uh, via plugins, uh, but that's uh, probably an advanced topic uh, which we will not cover today, but keep it in mind that uh, it's uh, possible. All right, let's uh, uh, close uh, this viewer, or actually let's keep it just for the sake of uh, interactivity. Uh, the next one would be uh, the histogram, which uh, shows uh, distribution of the values. Uh, so it's useful for uh, multiple purposes, uh, uh, in addition to actually showing the uh, distribution, it's possible to hover over a particular bin, in which case the corresponding rows will be highlighted uh, on uh, the rest of the viewers. And of course, all the standard operations for selecting groups uh, apply to the histogram. Uh, and by that, I mean, when we do a single click, it uh, selects uh, rows exclusively. Uh, control click, inverse selected rows. Shift click always adds. Uh, and control shift uh, clears the corresponding selection. Uh, of course, everything is reflected on uh, all the viewers uh, that you see. Uh, you can uh, easily and quickly re-bin it if you don't like the standard number of bins. Uh, it could be useful sometimes. Uh, another good feature is the ability to filter your data uh, right uh, through the histogram. So uh, you just do it like that and everything uh, gets reflected. So uh, if you need to quickly filter, there is no reason to add uh, the bigger filtering control. You can do it from uh, the histogram. Uh, the similar concept uh, we also support it for uh, other viewers uh, in different ways. Uh, I will try to highlight that during the presentation. So, so the, same, the same question, how do you uh, render categorical? 
in the histogram, especially oh. if, there are, uh, if there are tons of categories. Uh, like if you have uh, maybe five or six, it's kind of straightforward, but what right. if you have... Uh, uh, okay, so since you ask that, our next viewer will, do, will be a bar chart, <laughs> which is essentially uh, a bar chart, uh, which is different from uh, the histogram. Uh, but hold on, uh, stay with us for a little bit. Uh, another uh, nice feature of the histogram is also the, uh, because just like any other viewer, it highlights the uh, mouse over rows. So uh, for quick data profiling, uh, you can also just simply add a histogram and just uh, move your mouse over the corresponding uh, categories and you see immediately different uh, profiles, different uh, distribution types. A uh, really easy way to uh, get some quick uh, insights. Uh, following Dima's question, thank you, Dima. Uh, uh, histograms uh, are designed for continuous numerical values. Oh, well, essentially for numerical values. Uh, so even though they uh, look familiar to bar charts, conceptually uh, they are quite uh, different. So we have uh, two different viewers. One is for uh, numerical, which is a histogram, and that's uh, the bar chart for categorical values. Uh, they have slightly different color schema so that we can uh, distinguish them easily. Uh, and also the number, the direction of bins is uh, horizontal. So that makes uh, a lot more uh, sense. Uh, well, the default position of means is horizontal. It's uh, better because uh, it's a lot easier to read uh, the labels. Also, it gives a really nice uh, immediate distinction between uh, histogram and bar chart. Uh, so here uh, we uh, can apply any sort of uh, aggregation function. Uh, which is uh, supported for the column. And by the way, uh, we have a concept where uh, aggregation functions could be extended by plugins for particular data types. So for instance, it could be something interesting for molecules. So uh, any aggregation function that returns uh, numbers could be applied to the values. Uh, by default, it just counts it, uh, but uh, we might want to use any, any other, for, in, for instance, the first quartile or even the skew or uh, quartiles. Uh, it's also possible to uh, color code it. In which case, uh, you would also select an uh, aggregation function uh, that should go with the uh, color code. Yeah, pretty uh, convenient. Uh, so in, in, in which order are they sorted? Uh, from, by, by, by the aggregation value in the decre decreasing order or uh, by the name of categories or? Mm -hmm. uh, by default, they are sorted by the decreasing uh, value, uh, but uh, it could be uh, uh, changed. So, uh, uh, you see. And by the way, uh, please note what I just did. I uh, started looking for the property since I, had, I knew it, it had something to do with sorting. <laughs> I just typed sort, and instead of uh, the 100 properties, we only uh, got two of them. So yeah, uh, that could be said, uh, how you sort and the direction of sorting. So what, what does it look like if you have a very large number of uh, categories? Uh, right. Is there some uh, kind of scroll bar? Uh, exactly. Uh, so let's uh, do the uh, unique subject ID. Oh, sorry, by default it did not uh, and uh, yes, in this case, uh, it shows uh, the uh, scroll bar. Well, in this case, all the values are the same, so uh, they make little sense, uh, but on a slightly better data set, uh, they would look uh, good. Uh, it's uh, also uh, possible to uh, yeah, change many other properties uh, in the uh, bar chart. Uh, you can make it round uh, <laughs> or apply any 
uh, other sorts of visual uh, transformation or uh, customization. Uh, also, most of our viewers that uh, render aggregated values support uh, the concept whether uh, the, a property that defines what happens when you click on it. So you can either uh, select stuff, or which, which is the default option, or we can filter things. So uh, by using this property, it's possible to define uh, interactive dashboards that filter instantaneously. All right, let's uh, proceed to the next viewer, uh, which would be actually a quite uh, important viewer, a line chart. Well, that's your almost regular <laughs> line chart, but with uh, many enhancements uh, and uh, improvements. So uh, by uh, default, it uh, tries to find something uh, that it thinks uh, is a good axis to display on X. In this case, it found uh, a daytime axis. So oftentimes, you want to display longitudinal data on line charts, and that's why it showed it like that. Uh, by default, it uh, immediately shows you uh, a number of different uh, charts. So in this case, uh, we are looking at age, uh, height, and weight. Uh, this is done uh, just in order to give a uh, user a quick overview of what is there. If uh, we are only interested in one, we can uh, double click on any of them. And uh, from now on, we are only working with uh, one. So what else uh, could it do? So first of all, uh, uh, the X axis uh, could be uh, changed to pretty much anything. Uh, let's uh, change it to uh, H. Now that was the uh, uh, and what's uh, interesting about H is that in this data set it's an integer number. So many uh, values, uh, all, uh, many subjects have the same age, obviously. Uh, in this case, the line chart begins uh, aggregating data on the fly. In uh, this case, we are looking at uh, average uh, weight. Uh, what, uh, and of course, it could also be changed using any uh, aggregation function. We can also split it by uh, different uh, categorical columns. In this case, we are uh, showing the uh, average uh, weight uh, for age uh, with splitting by race. Uh, of course, uh, it's always possible to zoom in. Uh, I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And by the way, double clicking uh, zooms out uh, of uh, all viewers. By the way, just a uh, uh, minor suggestion. Uh, you know, if you uh, look at the uh, upper left corner, uh, split by uh, average and weight. I, I would suggest, you know, to give some kind of visual clue to users that average is actually a function, not the uh, uh, name of a column, mm -hmm. because they, they sort of appear the same and you may just have a column that's called AVG, you know, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and it Thank doesn't you. doesn't stand out as a uh, special thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Dima. Yeah, we'll try to come up with something. Maybe like color it somewhat differently or background or whatever. Mm -hmm. It sure. has to be distinct from, from the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, sorry for interruption. This is Anatoly. Um, do you guys support uh, tooltips on top of the data points in the chart below? Uh, mouse, mouse over. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you pick the uh, content of the tooltip? Because there are a lot more attributes in the, in the table information, but you only pick a few. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think by, that, default, uh, by default we show what is shown on the chart, but it could be uh, customizable. It could be customized. Uh, not exactly sure where. <laughs> uh, uh, 
just as a suggestion from my previous experience is that sometimes it, it works to have a two-stage tooltip. So if you uh, use um, tooltip, then you can offer a control to open full tooltip and switch to the full kind of showing all attributes information. I, I can I can show you after the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Rafoli. I'll uh, uh, on that. Yeah, this, let's make a note later. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oops. thank you. Very impressed. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, just uh, as a side note, it's also pos always possible to define exactly what is uh, being shown on a tooltip for individual point uh, using uh, view tooltip. So, for instance, if you only want to show uh, height and weight, we will do that. Uh, there are many uh, different renderers for, for the chart type. Uh, oh. Uh, I turned on the overview, <laughs> which is uh, the overview uh, in, in the bottom. But what I wanted to do was actually to change the chart view, which could be either uh, a line chart or area chart, uh, stacked by chart uh, or uh, stacked area chart. And of course, all of them uh, are highly interactive and they all uh, behave uh, in the same way. The viewer itself uh, is uh, pretty uh, high performance, so it's capable of visualizing uh, millions uh, of data points. I'm just going to show some uh, ECG uh, signal just to show you that uh, it's uh, really possible to work with uh, raw biosensor data. Uh, using this viewer. Uh, so unlike uh, other uh, data analytical platforms where they typically visualize uh, aggregations, uh, we can go down to the very raw data points. And just a quick question. Uh, suppose you're like uh, working with us and uh, now, now I've created the nice uh, visualization uh, for some data set and want you quickly share it with your colleagues. What's the most straightforward way of doing that? Say, uh, whatever you see in front of you right now, you want some mm -hmm. other person to, to look at. All right, so uh, you would click on the share icon and click uh, upload. Uh, so we want to see the only demo. Uh, I'm gonna remove two tables. And so this is what uh, a person will see. Uh, then I'm clicking OK. At this point, uh, the project is uploaded to the server. Previously, uh, it was all local to me. And now I'm going to share it with someone uh, who is you. <laughs> uh, and click OK, uh, this is done. You should have gotten an email with a direct link. When you click it, you will see uh, exactly uh, the way I see it now. So if uh, both of us start making changes the sa at the same time, uh, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we do not support uh, concurrent changes. We uh, are working on uh, doing the optimistic locking where uh, essentially uh, uh, you would be able to overwrite only your latest version of the data set, uh, but you can always uh, clone it or save it as another project. So that's not a tool for uh, interactive uh, collaboration. Uh, in a sense, you can't go and uh, change data simultaneously while having the same document open, uh, just like Google Documents, uh, but uh, you can still uh, pass your work uh, back and forth. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I was also uh, saying that uh, it's uh, high performance. Uh, it uh, also supports a number of other features, which I will probably not uh, cover in details. Uh, it supports uh, segments uh, and uh, other stuff, but probably it would be a good idea to proceed to our uh, uh, next viewer. 
now, uh, which would be the pie chart. So we are not going to uh, describe it in details since conceptually it's pretty similar to a bar chart, which personally I prefer uh, because it's easier to distinguish uh, uh, values and relations, but uh, it has some uh, uses too. Uh, it behaves in exactly the same way as bar chart, uh, showing uh, you aggregated values uh, with a few minor differences. We can also define the segment length. So if I want to uh, uh, length code by something, uh, it's possible to do. In this case, we see that uh, uh, looks like people with psoriasis uh, have uh, are the heaviest in our data set. Uh, so some insight that we just found. Okay. Uh, this is the trellis plot. We uh, covered it in our previous session. Uh, so just as a reminder, this is a plot that uh, slices uh, your data uh, by multiple categories, uh, in both uh, on X and Y axis. Uh, it's possible to specify uh, just one axis. In this case, for instance, we have uh, females on the left, males on the right, uh, or it could be uh, the other way around, or you could slice it uh, vertically or both, or it's possible to uh, put more than one category on either axis. So for instance, that would be uh, sex and disease versus race, uh, and we got something. Uh, it's also possible to change uh, the viewer type, uh, and it could be pretty much any viewer, including the viewers uh, from uh, uh, extensions, from plugins. Uh, it's also possible to go the other way around, so one way is to add a trace plot like that, and the other way is to start with any viewer uh, and through the menu, go to viewer, use in trellis, and we are going to see the exact same viewer with uh, the properties set, but in a trellis. So it's quite a convenient feature. The next plot uh, is a, a matrix plot. So what it does, it uh, 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 renders density plots for all combinations of uh, numerical columns found in your data set. And on the diagonal, we see uh, histograms, a really convenient tool for uh, quick uh, pattern identification. And here, uh, yeah, that's a density plot. We will cover it uh, a little bit later. Uh, here we don't see the individual points, but rather uh, the density of the number of points that fall under the corresponding bin. Uh, by the way, uh, it should also be possible to filter things using the uh, built-in viewers, which just like that. All right, our next viewer is a 3D scatter plot. Well, it is a scatter plot, but <laughs> in 3D. Uh, yeah, you can control it, zoom in, uh, zoom out, uh, define what's on the axis. Unfortunately, uh, we don't currently show the axis right here. Uh, we'll build that feature eventually. Uh, yeah, we can uh, use multiple uh, markers. Make the camera move off or stop, so uh, things like that. Uh, it could also be uh, color coded. Oh, next viewer, our density plot. Well, very similar to scatter plot, but you see the density of points instead of the individual point. 
uh, yeah, not much to do here. Uh, this viewer, which is called a PC plot, which stands for uh, parallel coordinates. Uh, it's pretty unique in a way that uh, it lets you uh, simultaneously visualize multiple attributes at once. So most of the viewers, that, uh, most of the other viewers, they show you uh, one, two, three, four, maximum five uh, attributes at once. Typically, that will be position coding, or some sort of size coding, color coding, and so on. Uh, this one is conceptually different. Uh, each, uh, so we see uh, selected columns as uh, vertical bars, and uh, each point is represented as a trajectory that uh, uh, goes uh, from left to right through uh, each bar representing a column with minimum uh, in the bottom and maximum uh, on top. So uh, sometimes uh, uh, you would spot some interesting uh, patterns in it. Also what's interesting, so yeah, first of all, uh, you can quickly identify the profile of the data set, uh, of, of a particular data point by hovering over it. Uh, also, you can uh, filter it right here. And interactively filter it, in which case you will see the uh, density of uh, the trajectories changing. So perhaps that's not the best uh, data set to uh, represent the concept. So you might uh, want to try it on others. Uh, it could be uh, pretty powerful. Um, not only you see uh, the density of trajectories, uh, but uh, pay attention, you see uh, there is that uh, distribution. Uh, that looks like a violin plot on each uh, of the columns, uh, which also follows the filter. So it uh, changes with time. It's also possible to uh, color code it. So if I want to color it by uh, weight, yeah. Yeah, it would look like that. So overall, a pretty powerful viewer when you have about uh, 10, 20 uh, dimensions. Uh, not always applicable, but uh, sometimes. Right. Uh, this one is a typical uh, word cloud, so I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining it. Uh, shows you what's in your data set. Uh, yeah, good when you have uh, not that many uh, different categories. But it will uh, also show you the most uh, prominent ones. So uh, they uh, will be uh, uh, shown in the bigger fonts. And of course, it's interactive as well. Uh, next one is the uh, network diagram. It's a pretty interesting viewer because uh, it uh, shows relations between different uh, concepts, concepts or between different items. So let's uh, uh, start. Well, first of all, this is what would happen uh, when we open it on any data set. Uh, it, uh, we can specify the column that contains the identifier for each node, and then uh, the viewer shows the connections between all them. So currently, let's do the connections between, uh, for instance, uh, disease and trace. So uh, that's what we got. So we have uh, uh, a number of different diseases and then races, and the way, uh, it works uh, is that a link between a disease and race, uh, it represents all uh, subject that have a particular uh, disease and race. So uh, it's really uh, convenient to first of all, just interactively explore your data set. For instance, you can quickly select either Asians or uh, people with uh, arthritis. 
uh, and also uh, size coding, uh, the bigger the group, the more columns, the more rows uh, fall into this group. So you can quickly identify the uh, nature of your uh, subset of your uh, uh, table. Uh, even though uh, the data itself uh, has nothing to do with uh, relations, uh, it's still uh, pretty useful, uh, as you see. Uh, now let's try to visualize something uh, that has relational information in the data set. Uh, to do that, I'm going to open uh, a project. Uh, I think it's called uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, yes, which represents the relations between uh, the Game of Thrones uh, characters. So this is uh, how the data set is represented. It has a number of columns, essentially source, essentially hero one, <laughs> uh, target, another person, then source of relationship, or, well, strength of relationship, and the type of relationship. Uh, uh, and uh, what we, what the viewer did by default, it positioned uh, our heroes <laughs> on the viewer and it applied the force uh, layout. So each point represents uh, a hero in the movie. Uh, so you probably noticed uh, there are two big clusters right, one on top and a smaller one in the bottom. So you probably guessed already what uh, each cluster represents. Anyone? Yeah, I must confess I haven't watched the series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's who is on which continent, right? Uh, perfect, Mike. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So by simply applying the first uh, layout, we figured out, uh, so these are all the heroes on the big continent. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, and these are uh, the isolated ones. Uh, and these two connections are probably uh, the guys who traveled between uh, continents. Uh, the viewer itself uh, is quite powerful. It has many uh, customizations. So uh, we are actually uh, showing different uh, types of relationships. We are color coding it. So uh, these are two uh, enemies. I am assume uh, uh, John Snow and Stumble Harley. I forgot who that is. Uh, uh, and it's also possible to dynamically uh, retrieve something for uh, your data points. In this case, we are connected it to uh, a Google search, which essentially shows the first available image for uh, the specified column. In which case, uh, it's actually <laughs> almost always uh, the picture of an actor. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure you can think about uh, different applications for that functionality, uh, not just for <laughs> visualizing relationships between uh, heroes in the movie. So yeah, that's uh, uh, what the viewer is for. Let's get back to our uh, more boring data set and let's move on. Uh, box plot. Uh, that's the statistical viewer that we all uh, love. Uh, in addition to visualizing the actual uh, box plot uh, with the uh, whiskers and uh, all sorts of averages and uh, medians and quartiles, uh, it also shows uh, each uh, data point. So we can uh, quickly inspect the outliers or adjust any uh, point. Uh, they can also be color coded, so in a sense they are almost like a small uh, scatter plot. Uh, also, this viewer has some built-in statistical features. So for instance, when uh, you, we visualize two categories, uh, chances are we are trying to prove some hypothesis. So uh, we figure it out automatically and we calculate the uh, p-value uh, without even uh, a user asking for it. 
Uh, in this case, it's a Welsh uh, test. Uh, we are currently working on uh, providing the proper uh, ANOVA tests for uh, multiple categories. So there would be no need to uh, run your R or Python scripts to figure out whether or not uh, the differences are statistically significant in measurements. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, every viewer uh, each is completely uh, customizable. Uh, so yeah, when you want to figure out what's in it, open its properties. So when users uh, see those uh, statistical uh, test results, uh, do they have any way of uh, clicking somewhere to find out what exactly uh, this number or exactly this number comes from? Like uh, if you click on the p-value. Uh, some explanation as to what is done to compute it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we already have <laughs> that issue <laughs> created in our ticket system. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, it's a shame. Uh, currently, we don't have that explanation, but uh, it's coming for both. The, uh, is it going to be a tooltip or a full-blown yeah. kind of? Uh, it's going to be a tooltip, and when you click on it, uh, it will show uh, the help for the corresponding statistical test. Yeah, it'll be really nice because uh, otherwise you just mm -hmm. cannot really rely on it, and you will have to uh, <laughs> go to R anyway to f figure out what it is. And you know, okay, that was how it was computed, the same mm -hmm. number. Yeah. Right. Uh, I agree, Dima. Uh, that's. Uh, really really uh, needed moreover we will probably uh, provide uh, some uh, simple uh, r or python code uh, right uh, along with the explanation uh, so that uh, it would be always possible to reproduce it in a couple of uh, clicks and maybe we will also provide an option to open it in the jupyter notebook with the appropriate analysis uh, already performed uh, and Jupyter notebooks we will uh, cover in probably uh, 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, our next viewer is uh, TreeMap. Well, uh, essentially, you define the hierarchy uh, in uh, our case. Uh, so it's just the uh, disease, and then uh, the each area gets uh, area coded uh, by uh, by by the function. Uh, all right, so you can specify the aggregation type. Uh, it, by default, it uh, counts the records, but it could be anything that is aggregatable. Uh, this type of viewer is great when you have a multiple uh, hierarchy or multiple categories in your data set. So for instance, if I want to have uh, a disease as a first level, but uh, within the disease, I want to uh, uh, see different sexes, I would do that. Uh, so uh, now everything is uh, yeah, color coded by it. And Andrew, you could size by distinct patients or have yeah. the choice be distinct yeah. patients or total records? Uh, number of distinct values is one uh, type of aggregation, so uh, it should be here. Uh, yes, unique. Uh, that's the number of uh, distinct values. Good. Mm -hmm. So it's not really uh, limited in terms of how many categories it can visualize, uh, but uh, depending on your data set, uh, you might hit some uh, practical limit. Uh, yeah, it's pretty convenient for uh, multiple purposes. Uh, we also use it internally for multiple purposes, for instance, for visualizing uh, how much uh, space uh, different uh, files take on your file system. Uh, that we will not <laughs> cover that today, but it will come. Uh, so let's just uh, 
do by uh, sex and by race uh, then by uh, disease so it will keep uh, slicing and dicing at some point uh, perhaps the uh, squares will get too small to distinguish right yeah a little bit hard to read some certain things because of uh, the overlap uh, right. I mean, it has its uh, limitations. Uh, it's also uh, adjustable. We did our best for, uh, to lay out everything automatically, but uh, it will also be customized. Next viewer is uh, a heat map, which uh, shows uh, every row uh, color-coded. Essentially, it's almost the same as, uh, as a grid, but it shows the information in a different way. So we see uh, immediately where the uh, different ages are, where the uh, small values are, where the big values are, and so on. Uh, we can uh, drill down if we want to, and if we zoom in far enough, we'll see individual values. And at this point, it pretty much becomes our uh, regular grid uh, with absolutely the same uh, functionality and behavior. So you can select uh, columns or rows uh, and do anything with it. Uh, again, it's really uh, useful for uh, uh, getting an insight about your data. So we immediately see uh, how many categories there are in each uh, column. Right, uh, just by looking at the color. Another cool trick is uh, to see how different numerical values correlate. For instance, uh, let's uh, sort by height. Uh, so uh, bigger, larger values are on top and smaller are in the bottom. And we see that it also correlates with weight. So uh, generally, uh, heavier people are on top and lighter people are in the bottom. So uh, it could do uh, tricks like that. We plan to support some uh, functionality related to hierarchies so that we would uh, display dendrograms on it, but it's not currently implemented. Uh, I'm just saying that because I expected Dima to ask that question. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, but okay. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, next one is uh, statistics. Uh, nothing uh, really interesting about that. Um, just you can see multiple statistical values for uh, all columns, uh, and you can select which columns to visualize and which statistics to visualize. And of course, uh, it by default, it follows the filter, so everything gets uh, calculated uh, automatically. Just a quick question. Uh, does the underlying uh, implementation distinguish between empty uh, strings and nulls? Uh, no. Uh, and that uh, solved a lot of issues for us. Uh, it's a lot uh, easier this way. Okay. Uh, so it's just like an oracle, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Empty string is the same as an null. Uh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If it shows empty, it's empty. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, calendar. Well, that's our regular calendar with uh, uh, markers where there are, so uh, we can immediately uh, see where the uh, rows corresponding to particular uh, dates are. Uh, it also works uh, with different aggregation levels, so we might want to look at people uh, who uh, tested in December, January, February, just like that, uh, or by uh, day of week. Pretty convenient uh, when you have a uh, proper data set. Uh, next one is, uh, well, grid. <laughs> We've been using this grid a lot. Uh, so you probably already are familiar a little bit, at least, with it. I'll just mention that uh, it's possible to 
uh, visualize different uh, data types and different uh, renderers in grid. For instance, uh, we might want to add a spark line or a bar chart that represents uh, numerical values from the corresponding numerical columns uh, or visualize it as a, a radar plot or bar chart. So we have probably five different uh, row summary methods which would give you a quick overview of the structure of the values that this row contains. Uh, by the way, we also have uh, a way to visualize uh, these particular uh, renderers, representations of a row on a scatter plot, but we'll probably just yeah, trust us <laughs> on us. Uh, let's not demo it right now. Okay, we have a few more important viewers. One of them is the uh, markdown viewer. Essentially, use uh, this viewer to write anything that you want uh, about that uh, view. It's also possible to link to different objects in the system using our uh, markdown language uh, for help. Well, essentially, read up uh, help uh, and uh, it will. Uh, tell us how to, for instance, create links to uh, users, projects, uh, tables, connections, and so on. So it's a rich text with a lot of uh, enhancements. By the way, I just realized uh, I forgot to mention an important thing. Uh, each uh, viewer could be annotated as well. The easiest way to annotate a viewer is to provide a <coughs> title, uh, which you can do by either editing uh, the properties and editing the uh, title. Scroll to the bottom, it's in the description area. Or if you want to do it quicker, click on the viewer, press F2. Uh, by default, it pro provides uh, a reasonable description, but of course could be customized. Uh, also, if uh, we want to provide something more meaningful or a lot more text, uh, it could be uh, edited, it could be set in the description field, uh, in which case we can include uh, a markdown. So that's a description text, and we also can position it uh, on uh, different sides. So yeah, here's our, our markdown description, and we still have the title. Okay, let's uh, probably get rid of it so that it would look better. Uh, another important viewer is a tile viewer, which uh, shows uh, information as tiles, as uh, small forms. Uh, yeah. By default, it shows uh, all the values in the column, uh, in the row, I think up to some reasonable limit, perhaps 20. Uh, but what's cool, uh, it could be customized. So uh, we can go to the settings, edit form, then uh, modify our form in any way we want to, uh, then close and apply, uh, it's uh, re-executed. So that sort of uh, form building capability is uh, built into the platform. Uh, of course, uh, you can interact with it uh, in the same way as you do as you would with other uh, viewers. Uh, it's possible to select records or deselect, uh, and it follows the filter. Okay. Next up is uh, the form, which is very similar to the tile viewer, uh, except that it shows uh, only one row which by default uh, follows the uh, current row. It can follow the uh, mouse over row or any other 
just like that. Could be convenient for quick profiling. Uh, it also supports uh, inline editing uh, of the form. Again, we can do it just like that. What it also support is uh, editing of values. Uh, for that, we would click uh, uh, this uh, button and we can start editing it. For quick profiling, for, uh, it's uh, also possible to select or unselect a record, just like that, so which could be convenient for reviewing some data sets. Oh, by the way, uh, do any graphical viewers support uh, value editing? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, <laughs> that feature in 3DX that was disabled eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Demo, what you are talking about. <laughs> and just for the context, uh, once we had a capability where you could uh, select a bunch of rows and then move them visually in this chart, and uh, the actual values would get uh, changed in the data set. Uh, it was a funny feature, but we turned it off uh, for <laughs> many reasons. <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> All right, uh, the last uh, viewer that I will mention today. So, so the, the answer is that it doesn't support us. Uh, yeah, we don't have it uh, in data grog. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's fun. Uh, another viewer that we have is uh, the uh, uh, Google map viewer which visualizes uh, longitude and latitude information. So in this particular case, we are looking at some uh, data from the telecom provider. And actually it renders uh, 125,000 rows uh, uh, interactively. Uh, and it would uh, follow the filter. Some of you might have seen it during the presentation. And if we start filtering it by the timestamp, we actually see that uh, it's uh, about uh, 20 people driving in cars in uh, Kharkiv city in Ukraine. And yeah, keep- So uh, how, do you, how do you tell it uh, uh, which one is which? I mean, uh, which is uh, longitude and latitude? Uh, well, you can by, by, by the, just the column name, or there's some way of like, telling it. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, just open the properties, and you see immediately what's uh, latitude and what's longitude. Uh, so yeah, we do our best uh, analyzing the names of the columns and the content in order to figure out what's applicable. Uh, but yeah, uh, it all could be uh, customized. Yeah, there's always problem with the coordinate representation. Of uh, it always uses uh, degrees and essentially decimal mm -hmm. degrees, right? No, no, right. no other coordinates are uh, mm -hmm. allowed, right? Like if you have uh, minutes and seconds and such. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we only support uh, that currently, but we have uh, transformers, uh, function transformers, uh, which we will cover in some other sessions. And we have a way uh, where of functions where the platform automatically determines that, for instance, coordinates could be extracted from the, the address, like city or street address. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a separate uh, demo for that. Um, and since we're at it, uh, how do you deal with regional settings? Like, for instance, people want to see uh, dates uh, in European format. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, by default, we uh, provide the format in a way that would allow uh, a user to distinguish the differences between values. So if it's, for instance, millisecond uh, precision in a data set, we would show milliseconds, but if, if it's only days, we would only show days. It could be overridden by uh, right-clicking and selecting uh, current column, then format, and then uh, you can either select from a list of predefined formats or uh, select uh, your own uh, in the properties. So we have uh, different ways of specifying very custom formats. But, but you do, uh, do you have a like, concept of regional settings that would just apply to everything uh, similar mm -hmm. to what 
some frameworks like .NET framework does, you know, so you... Uh, no, we... The, the concept of culture, sort of. Uh, no, we do not. Uh, we will uh, at some point, and it probably could be uh, determined by the administrator of the system or uh, so on, uh, but currently uh, there is uh, no setting for a culture. Uh, it's hugely confusing, at least when uh, importing and dealing with uh, CSV files. So currently we are not opening that uh, Pandora's box, but eventually we will. And, okay. and uh, is there a, a quick way of uh, translating the date times to say uh, for UTC or uh, because yeah. it's, it's often needed, you know, so you have uh, say different log files from different uh, systems and you want to merge them together and you need to transform everything to the same time zone. Uh, yes, demo, we have them. I'll connect with you directly because we mm -hmm. are running out of time. Uh, last viewer that I'm showing is uh, the uh, called a shape map viewer, which uh, is capable uh, of uh, visualizing arbitrary shapes uh, that are connected to uh, the, the data points. So what's cool about it is that uh, there is a collection of uh, different shapes uh, in SVG format that resides on our server. And when uh, we open that file, uh, it uh, checks up all that collection and we literally have uh, probably thousands or tens of thousands of different shapes. And it figures out the best uh, map or the best shape uh, that is applicable to this current data set. Uh, for instance, we've just opened a data set with some uh, Germany uh, GRP by state, uh, where we have German states in one column. And we just opened the viewer and it immediately recognized not only the uh, data type that it's a uh, German state, but it also opened the corresponding uh, map. So the user don't have to select anything. Uh, it's very powerful also. For instance, if we open something with uh, Pennsylvania counties uh, and we would open a shape map, we would see Pennsylvania, but uh, if there would be global countries, we would see a world map. Uh, this concept is also uh, very scalable. Uh, so it does not necessarily have to relate to geographical locations. It could be anything, uh, right? Uh, regions of the brain or uh, uh, some uh, grocery store map plan, uh, it would still work the same way. And it's really cool that uh, we can uh, externally just some, uh, for instance, artists could uh, upload their shapes uh, and then uh, they would be automatically discovered and applied by the viewer. So there are probably, uh, yeah, many <laughs> uh, different uh, questions and options that could be used uh, with uh, that viewer. Uh, we will probably not go into that uh, right now, uh, just for the sake of time. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that it's very powerful and yeah, please reach out to us with uh, questions. So with that, uh, are there any general questions or comments on uh, different viewers before we move to the next topic? Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, viewers could be implemented as uh, plugins, uh, as packages, and actually we have uh, uh, people from uh, uh, Arcadia, so uh, I have Sasha, uh, Nikolai, uh, that are currently working on uh, a couple of uh, proof of concepts uh, of uh, different uh, custom viewers implemented in uh, packages. Uh, so once it's done, uh, yeah, they become uh, first class viewers, just like the ones uh, you currently, uh, you, just like uh, the ones we've covered. All right, uh, I think we yeah, covered that area pretty well. So let's uh, move uh, to the next one, which is also connected to data uh, visualization. And uh, it will be presented by Ben. Uh, so, uh, Ben, please take. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Yes, uh, hi, everyone. So, uh, today I'm going to 
talk about the newly added feature, which is support for uh, Python notebooks uh, in uh, Data Grok. Let me share my screen. Okay, uh, so uh, here we go. So as of now, there is a recent feature in uh, Data Grok where you can create notebooks, uh, Python notebooks that many of us are pretty much used to. So let me just show you the general idea. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much what you used to have in uh, IPython notebook and you can pretty much write any code and uh, you get the idea. But, uh, and just make a very simple plot here. Something like this. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can uh, do things pretty familiar to you, but let me show you some other use case for, for that, where you can switch between, uh, between your data set, process this data set in uh, Python notebook and get back to the uh, resulting data set back in data group. And I'm gonna take one data set from, I think it's from Kaggle, it has uh, video game sales with ratings, and I want to analyze them. So let me get there. I'm gonna go and open the local file. So I would be interested in basically two values. I will look how the uh, critic score of the game is related to the user score of the game. And of course, I can do this with the scatter plot for, for these two values. Let me just do that. For instance, I can choose the critic score here and the user score over here and look at the scatter plot. But, but then what I want to do is to show the histogram for, for, the, for these two values, one on the top for the critic score and the other one is on the right for the user score. But the thing is that it's not currently possible in data grok to, to do that on the vertical axis. So I cannot turn this uh, histogram uh, 900, uh, 900, 90 degrees. And uh, uh, this might come in the future, but right now it's not possible. So I need to alleviate this somehow. And for that to happen, I'm going to use the new support for uh, for Python notebook. So now I can do this. Uh, I can just go to the email menu and call open a notebook. And then what will happen is that any notebook will, will be created and I will get access to to my data set named. And uh, yeah, pretty much. So now we can start to uh, process that data set and then return it back to uh, data grok uh, table and continue working with it. So now let me cheat a little bit. I just gonna open my already pre-made notebook uh, with the uh, with the code, so I can actually just replicate what I already made, not to waste time on typing, but uh, I'll just close this and that, and open the area. Uh, and I'm gonna open my notebook that I previously made, and here it is. I said it previously. And here it was opened in the uh, HTML format, but then in order to modify it, I have to press edit button. And 
And actually, when I open it this way, it will be run and uh, produce the result. And it will happen in the left window. And that's what we have, but it's not what I want. I, I'm just going to go back to the code. So, uh, OK, uh, we are ready to go. And I'll just proceed uh, with some changes I want to do to this uh, data set. And I'm going to give it a name and uh, do a little bit of coding here. Pretty simple. Uh, this is just a handy way to suppress some warnings that I don't need. And then uh, the problem that I have to fix here is, is this. In my data set, uh, I'm interested in the user score, which is not uh, readily available as the float64 column. So I have to fix that. That's I'm going to do. And I'll just copy paste these couple of lines. Uh, I need to just convert it explicitly over here. Yes, and uh, now we have it in the user score available for the further processing. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use Seaborn to actually produce what I want. And this will be my picture. And I can proceed with that. I can just produce a little more advanced picture with two histograms and uh, actually a linear regression line over here. I I can highlight it a little more with different colors and stuff like that. And that's pretty neat that I can just take the picture and move on. But let me do uh, another change to the data set, which will be handy for me. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to just leave a couple of columns which show how much the critic score deviates from the user score and vice versa. And for that to happen, I'm going to normalize these values uh, to a range of from 0 to 1 and display that. And actually, I could also do that uh, in, uh, in Datagrok uh, directly because you could just call the, uh, the uh, where was the uh, normalize. So there is a function for uh, normalization of the values and I could just select a column over here, actually not in this data set but in the original data set, and I could produce the column in an explicit way and then I could, I could uh, just normalize the values using the min-max scalar, okay? But that's not what I'm going to do right now because I could choose another scalar if I need to. And here I just use the regular scalar, min max scalar from scikit-learn. But then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get rid of these diacritical symbols in the names of the games. And there might be several reasons for why I want to do that. And one of the reasons for me personally is to continue working on the uh, text processing functionality and modules for Datagrog. I pretty much want to normalize all these uh, all these symbols to ASCII symbols, and maybe I could produce the word cloud or stuff like that. And there's quite a bunch of them in this particular word, not only. So this hinders me, and I want to get rid of that. And this is the this is the thing I'm gonna do in the code. I just wrote that code that transforms my uh, data frame in that regard of the name. Uh, with that <laughs> somewhat fancy code, uh, which has been proven to work. I'm going to show you it works. So let me just run that script and show you what happens. This is a function called grok, you have seen in the bottom of the code, and this emits the results back to data grok so that I can work with it here. And um, as far as you can see, um, you just find one of these uh, Pokemon things, which I had in the original text, the diacritical symbol here. And the same I need to spot here. And yeah, this is, this is it. So now it doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, and then I can work with the resultant table pretty much the same way. And uh, I can 
maybe sort by this value and see that some of the games are pretty much deviating uh, in regards to the credit score and the user score. So that's, uh, that's pretty nice uh, for those who get used to working with notebooks and you have all you get used to at hand. You can, you can use the familiar hotkeys and uh, all other things. It's pretty nice to go back and forth between the visualizations and the Python processing. One more thing I want to show, it's connected, uh, at least for me, that I found to be connected to, to working with notebooks as well. Uh, for instance, I have a script and I want to output the graphics and I want to embed these graphics into one of, one of, my, uh, one of my dashboards or one of my projects that I'm creating. So I'm gonna show you an example of this uh, using the uh, using the demographics data set that Andrew was using as well. So uh, let me just open it. I'll expand this window. Uh, yes. And I'm gonna show you a script, uh, not the one I, I uh, wrote, but the one that is already available in the platform. And this is the uh, analysis of variation script. It's pretty much the simple script in, in R, but the thing is that it produces the uh, graphics. And this is just a reminder, I believe we have already seen that in one of the previous videos, but I'm just gonna run it here to show you that Indeed, you can write a script that produces a graphical result to visualize anything you want. And here we go. And that's pretty cool. I could have done the same for my script, actually. Uh, uh, and in order to do that, I would like to convert my script uh, to a function. And this is not something available already in the public version. Therefore, I have to move to the developer's version of Datagrog and just show you where this function is uh, briefly. So I'm gonna go to notebooks and yeah, and I'm gonna just open one of the notebooks I have here. And uh, it's empty one, but it doesn't really matter, uh, I could, type whatever, and there is a button uh, that's gonna be soon available in the public version, you can open the script. And yeah, and my notebook will be converted into a script, and then I can do what I have just shown to you. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Now I'm gonna stop my share, go back to you. Andrew? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, so uh, notebooks are not only a powerful way for uh, visualizing data and doing reproducible uh, science, but yeah, in our case, it's a built-in capability to debug your uh, scripts in Python, R, or any other language using the uh, platform and nothing else by that. And uh, as you saw, there is a first class support uh, for integration with the data that is already in the platform. So you, we can start with the table, modify it, but then also uh, bring our uh, uh, Jupyter notebook results uh, back to Grok. Uh, but also it's really nice that uh, there is some uh, IntelliSense uh, support. Uh, so essentially it's uh, an integrated environment for uh, uh, debugging scripts. That's uh, been a missing link for uh, quite a while, but uh, now we have uh, bridged uh, this gap. So as usual, I have uh, questions. So uh, 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 when you create Jupyter Notebooks, uh, are they part of a project or are uh, they uh, completely detached from project? Uh... Yeah, Alexander, do you want to take that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, uh, you can uh, use them as a part of a project or uh, completely detached uh, notebooks support both of these options. So how do you uh, like 
tell the system which option do you want to use? Is it uh, by, by, by default? So you create a notebook. Is it the, uh, that notebook is a uh, thing, is a standalone thing actually, right? So it's... Yeah, so you yeah, you are completely right. Uh, notebook, uh, notebook has been created as a separate entity, and then you can put things uh, in the project. Uh, just like the query or data connection, the principle is. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the environment in which it runs, uh, do you have any control over it? So if you have uh, some dependency on custom packages or whatever, or dealing with Python notebooks, for instance. Uh, yeah, there is actually a combo box uh, and ability to choose an environment inside the package, uh, but uh, there is no uh, hard link uh, to this environment. So uh, this environment, of course, it should uh, be deployed uh, on the server, but uh, environment itself uh, is located uh, inside the package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, looks pretty cool. Yeah, Vasily has been doing a great job on uh, supporting Jupyter and environments recently. So yeah, uh, it's a lot more powerful now. Yeah, it's a really cool feature. Um, so I imagine it could be a long answer, but um, sort of doing dependency management, sort of package management for those notebooks um, that's, that's sort of done at the server level or done within a project. Mm -hmm. uh, Vasily, can you take the answer, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, at the moment, we support environments for notebooks. Uh, and uh, if you want to use environments for the notebooks, you can use a uh, list of from list that already installed in our system as default or something that other <coughs> people, users, users are using. Or you can uh, put your notebooks uh, and environments into the package and create a package and deploy it to the system and use it inside the packages. Oh, yeah, so that sounds pretty flexible. So that, that's, that would be sort of self-service by the user then? Yep. We are also working on uh, the way to expose, uh, uh, to make uh, notebooks parameterizable and more like uh, functions where they would also be uh, suggested uh, to the user based on the context that he or she is looking at. So yeah, a lot more uh, will be coming soon. Okay, we have uh, one minute left. Any other questions? Okay, great. Then we can get uh, back one minute or less <laughs> of the time left. Uh, I'm happy we covered Jupyter Notebooks. Unfortunately, we did not uh, have time today to cover uh, predictive modeling. Uh, so that would probably be the topic of our next discussion. So, Thank you all uh, for staying with us. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I hope to see everyone in uh, two weeks. So thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, Andrew, can you stay for a minute?